Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is crochet. Let's take a look at the definition of this verb. The verb crochet means to make a garment or a piece of fabric using crochet. And I find it always quite difficult or challenging to explain um, uh, the meaning of a word when it uses another form of the word in its definition. So using crochet here is an example of the noun form of the word. We're going to look at that later. Uh, and as a bit of a preview, when we talk about crochet, we're talking about a single thread and a hooked needle. So I've tried to include a, a picture down in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. You can see the person here just has one long needle. I know it's very small, so you probably can't see kind of the hook shape on the end. Um, but to many people who aren't uh, very artsy, craftsy in nature, and that would certainly be me, um, you might be thinking, wait, uh, you just did knit the other day. Aren't knit and crochet the same thing? No, 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 no. These are a little bit different in um, in the tools being used. So the types of, of needles or hooks, uh, uh, a hooked needle in this case, um, and, and more experienced people uh, could certainly explain kind of those finer differences. But you should know this is not the exact same as the verb knit, okay? So uh, you might be looking at this word and, and listening to the pronunciation and being a little surprised. Uh, this is a, a word that comes from French. Um, so we're not pronouncing the, the T here. It's really kind of a silent sound. So as I say this verb, crochet, crochet. Um, you should know it's a regular verb. It's ending with a vowel sound. Um, and so that sort of connects to why we're not doubling the T here before we're adding any suffixes to the end of our verb. So uh, if I want to make the progressive form of this verb, all I'm going to do is add ing to form crocheting crocheting. And our past tense and participle forms of this verb can be made just by adding ed. The ed ending is just going to make a d sound because this verb ends in a vowel sound. So it should sound like this, crocheted, crocheted. Okay. Now, there aren't any phrasal verbs um, where we, we need to study or, or consider their meaning. And that's going to allow us to have some more time to talk about how we make more information questions. I've mentioned in my other videos, you'll see textbooks and other teachers call these WH questions. I think that's a great name for them because uh, generally the word that begins the question starts with the letters WH. I like calling these more information because I, I always want to distinguish them from a yes or no question. So uh, with any of the examples we use here, I want you to know you these really aren't questions where you can say yes or no to. You have to provide some more information to the person asking the question. Today we're going to practice making more information questions in the present perfect. And as a bit of a review, many times we're using this verb tense to talk about an action that occurred at some unknown point in the past, or describing an action that started in the past and continues into the present. Our structure here uh, is going to be to use a question word, and then we're going to use the helping verb have or has depending on what our subject is. So uh, if you take a look at the chart on the screen here, you can see have will be used with the subjects I, you, we, and they, and the helping verb has will be used with the subjects he, she, and it. And then what comes after that is really just the participle form of the verb. There might be other words that, that follow our verb to help give the question greater context. But you are welcome to kind of pause this video and look at the chart and practice making a few different questions. But we're going to essentially select one word from each box. I'll do one example. Uh, maybe I, I want to know um, what has he studied? 
right? So here I'm maybe asking for topics, subjects, uh, and, and I'm asking to kind of go back into the past and continue into the present. What are, are the things he has studied? Okay. Now we're gonna practice use the, uh, making more WH questions with our verb of the day, crochet. We're gonna start off with a question about uh, location, about place. We use the question word where for that. An example might be, where have they crocheted since the shop closed? So sometimes you'll hear of groups, uh, friends, uh, maybe community members getting together, uh, sitting and, and doing uh, their crochet work together, uh, being able to talk and maybe offer advice or ideas uh, to someone. So here we're asking where this action has occurred. Maybe they had been meeting in some kind of shop. The shop has now closed. We can ask questions about time. This could be time on a clock or time is in a date, um, even a day, a month, a year. We use the question word when. So another example here. When have you crocheted hats for babies? Okay, so we're asking um, when in the past have you done this? Other uh, types of questions we ask are about the manner in which uh, an action is done. So uh, we use the question word how for those. How has she crocheted so many Christmas gifts already? Uh, some people really like to make things for others uh, as part of holiday gifts. So I might be asking this question, and it's July now, um, and I see that someone has, has made maybe hats and gloves and scarves. And uh, I'm like, wow, how has she been able to do this? It, in, in maybe just six months. Another type of question you hear is uh, to know the reason someone is, is doing, or in this case, has done a particular action. We use the question word why for that. Why has he crocheted coasters? Okay. Uh, a coaster is something you, you might put a, a drink on so that it, it doesn't leave uh, a spot on, on like a wooden table of, of some kind. The next type of question we ask is about an object. Um, so we can use the question word, what? So we're asking about a thing. What have you crocheted, right? Again, we're asking you to name something. Maybe it's a coaster, maybe it's a scarf. Who knows, but you're gonna name that object. What I hope you'll notice with these first five questions is that they all follow the pattern we talked about. So we have question word, then you see have or has, then you see a subject, and then you see the participle form of our verb. The next two types of questions are a little bit different. Okay? Another way we can ask about an object or thing is with the question word which. But what comes immediately after which um, is, is another noun um, or, or phrase uh, that gives someone options to choose from. Right. So an example of this might be, which patterns have you crocheted? Right. So we're asking someone, maybe we're, we're looking at a book, a magazine, something, and we're asking a person to sort of pick from the patterns uh, available. And the last type of question that doesn't really follow, follow our pattern is uh, a question about the subject, the person who is responsible for an action. We use the question word, who, um, but who also serves as our subject. So our pattern here will be who has, and then the participle form of our verb. You can see that in the example, who has crocheted before, right? Maybe uh, we're at, in a class or getting some type of instruction, right? And the teacher asks this question uh, to the people attending. I always like to note that our question word who is singular. Even though our answer might result in two or more people, we're always um, using that, that singular form, and that can be helpful in other verb tenses, not just the present perfect. Now, let's spend a moment looking at uh, a word related, some words, I should say, related to our verb crochet. 
And the first word we're going to look at is again the noun form of the word. Uh, I kind of warned you at the beginning uh, that there, there was another noun form. So when I, I use the noun crochet, I am referring to needlework, uh, where again we've got these interlocking looped stitches um, that have been formed from thread and a hooked needle. So I've got an example uh, that ties to my example sentence. So if you look down at the bottom uh, right hand, right, I might say these doilies were made with crochet. Okay. So uh, a doily sometimes is a, a decorative uh, covering people will keep in their home, maybe on tables, uh, coffee tables, uh, very commonly. I feel like all of my grandmas um, had doilies as, as kind of a... a I don't know if it's meant to be uh, or thought of as being kind of elegant. It, it takes a lot of precise work, as you can see, to 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 create a pattern just like this. Um, but I, I wouldn't say it's a really functional item that it, it serves some sort of purpose to to keep someone warm or uh, to to wear for a particular reason. But but again, very beautiful. And the last uh, word you might hear is the noun crocheter. So we can see that suffix er. Many times that's telling you this is a person who, and we're going to connect back to our verb and, and noun here, it's a person who does this needlework with a hooked needle. So an example of this word in a sentence might be, what are common mistakes that beginning crocheters make? So uh, again, I have not done this. Um, I remember my mom spending a very long time trying to crochet a blanket. Uh, felt like it, it lasted months or maybe even years, but she might be offended uh, by my memory of that. A uh, lot of uh, redoing and, and, and patience. But if I might be asking someone who's more experienced, tell me, Right? What are some of the common mistakes people make so that I can learn from them and, and do better? Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.